video I'm going to show you how I made this laminated outdoor table. If you want to know how I made it, watch the video and there's a list of ingredients in the description box below. So first up I'm going to cut the boards for my laminated top of my table. So these boards here uh, Vitex hardwood. They are 140 wide by 19 mil thick. Now they are going to be split into three. So I'm doing the, the tabletop 40 mil thick. So I'm going to strip it into three 40 mil thick. 40 times three adds up to 120. Gives me 20 mil left over for the width of the blade cuts and that sort of thing. Now, I want it flat, square edged all the way around on the top and the bottom. So I really need to cut the edge off before I start. But I have another job I'm doing at the same time with some railings, which are the same size, thankfully. Um, and they need to be rounded all the way around. So I can just round over that already rounded edge. So I don't need to change the saw size. I can just rip them all at 40. The first cut I will use for the railing job, the next two cuts I use for my tabletop. So I'm going to do that now with my homemade ripping saw here. So I've got that set up to a gap of 40mm there, and the blade sort of just above the height of the piece of timber. And I'm going to rip off a heap of wood. If you want to know how I built this table saw, check out the video in the links below or in at the video at the end, the link at the end of the video. That's it. And to make things a bit more interesting so it's not all one colour of the Vitex here, I'm going to do a few other timbers such as other hardwoods like Quila, Aqua, Selina, maybe even some Rimu, Rosewood. Chuck a few different colours in there, maybe even a few different widths. They're all just got to be 40mm for the top, but width wise this, these ones are 19mm but we could go up to double that and it would probably still look alright. So I'm going to rip this quealer down, so I've got some contrasting colours. It's much darker than the Vitex, as you'll be able to see here. So, total difference there. Also, the difference in thickness is only 19mm, it's 32mm. So I'm just going to rip the edge off, this pencil round edge, so that it's you can get square cut pieces like this and I'll cut them 40mm wide on my other table saw but to do this ed, first edge I'm just going to use my other table saw I've also got some rosewood here which I'll incorporate into the tabletop. It's already cut 40mm wide so that's handy. And I've got some 40 by 40 Vitex. I think I'll stick a couple of boards of that in the middle and that'll make the pattern a bit more interesting. So I've been having a bit of a play here just trying to work out a pattern. I think I might go something like this. Might just swap a few of the boards around to get the colours right. Just give it a wipe with some. give you an idea of what it'll sort of look like when it's finished. Just a bit of alcohol on there. It's gonna be good. So I think I'll finalize my pattern here for the laminated tabletop. Um, as you can see there's some rods laying across it. What I'm thinking of doing is putting stainless steel rods through and gluing it. Now you could do one or the other 
because you could, if you didn't want to glue it, you could just put a whole lot of rods through, tighten them up, and that would be that. But I'm just a little bit worried water will get in between doing that, and the boards and places will start twisting up and down. I don't really want that to happen, so, or you could just laminate it with glue. Um, if you glue it, of course, and it comes free at any point, a crack will open up and in effect the table will sort of fall in half. Well, it won't because it's under support, but the under support's probably enough to hold it all together, but the steel rods will also help in clamping it while I'm building it, so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm using stainless steel rods, apart from I've already cut one of them up that I bought for it, so I might have to use a galvanized one here, unless I go out and buy one beforehand and see how, how much I get done today. To laminate this, I'm going to make a jig because I don't want to do it flat like this because I don't want glue draining out of it, um, even though it is pretty thick the stuff I'm going to use, but I want to stack them on edge sort of thing. So I'm going to build a quick jig out of some timber and I will slot all the pieces of timber in and glue them as I go. But I also have to, unfortunately, because I'm putting these steel rods through, drill holes through every board four times. So you could do that, or you could do the gluing, or I'm going to show you both methods at the same time. Just for fun and strength. But first off, I'm going to roughly cut these to length. Slice off each end, get rid of all the long sticky outy bits, um, and then I'll drill the holes. So with my boards all clamped together and held up, those boards going across to just stop the clamps from damaging. Also got an extra board on each side to stop the clamps from damaging the end boards. Just going to cut freehand along the line I'm drawing there. This isn't the final edge, this is just to make it easier for all the drilling and other things I've got to do. deck strong enough because lifting this thing up onto the board to cut it was a Herculean effort in itself so this is going to be a heavy table when she's done. So I have now marked some lines. I've marked one 100 mil or 4 inches from the edge Another one, 530 from the edge. That's the center line of the table. And same again at this end, 100 and, and 530. And those lines that I've drawn on there will match up with this line on my drill press, which is the center of the drill. So center of each hole should all be the same. I am using a 10mm brad point bit to drill the holes and I have 108 of them to drill so let's get to it. So I've numbered each board so that I keep them in the right order for my pattern and I've redrawn the lines so that they're on the back side as well as the front because what I'm going to do is put the top side to the back of my um, fence thing here and that way the distance from there to the drill should always be the same so if there's any vagaries in the thickness of the wood the dip the distance from the rod I'm putting through to the top of my um, tabletop should always be the same and so it'll be fairly smooth on the top so that I have don't have too much planing sanding that sort of thing to do afterwards and I whipped up a quick little stand here just because these are quite long, just to hold them in place. So first of all I'll drill these outer ones with forcing a bit and then I'll do the 10 mil holes and everything. Now you need to go down as deep as the nut and the washer 
which is probably just over halfway for me but if you're making one then it'll depend on the size of your thickness of your washer and the size of your nut and that sort of thing let's get to it lots of holes to drill Now a dry fit of the rods to see if my holes all line up. Look at that, they're going on. So they all line up with the rods, apart from the end piece on this side. This is it here and I drilled the holes with the wrong marks obviously and I flipped it over and stuck it around the wrong way and so they're all over to one side don't quite line up with each other. So I will have to make a new one of these but she's looking good. So for my two edge boards I'm using this Selingna another hardwood. Um, I need to take these rounds off one side so that it will go nicely onto my flat table edge. So I'll just run them through the table saw. So for my jig to hold the tabletop while I glue it, I've got two lengths, one meter long. And these can be just about anything you want it fairly wide just to keep it straight but what I'm using is just because I've got it is this Vitex it's truck decking profile stuff ship lap but that doesn't matter as long as it's got two straight edges is all I need and I need a 40 mil gap for my tabletop in between and then I've got a 500 long board at the bottom for stability and then at the top I have another one cut 300 which once I've slid everything in all the slats of the table will come down through here and then I'll screw that on the top to keep it all tight and these will act as a sort of clamp to keep my edges straight and I'll need to um, tape these edges as well, just put some paper or something, I'll put some masking tape down them um, so that glue doesn't stick to them when I'm laminating the top so I need to make five of them, so I better get to it. I won't show you all the footage of that, because you might not want to do it this way anyway, but I'll just do this one. So I've decided to screw a board on the base as well like so, just to make them so they will stand up by themselves. I was going to attach them all with a board along the top or the bottom, but this will make it a lot easier to just throw them down like that. I might still put a board along the top lining them all up, but that will certainly make setting it up a lot easier. Dink! 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 Donk! So I have my jiggle set up now. And I have packed out the bottoms of some of them, shims, just to get it all level. So she's level now, ready to go. So the glue I will be using is this. It's a two-pot epoxy glue. Time to finally put on some glue. So that's my edge piece glued, ready to go. And now I've got to thread all these on. I'm going to start at this end, number one, and just make sure I've got that going up the right hand side. And those are all my top faces of boards. And I've got to um, put the rods in to begin with. 
that might be a little bit tricky. So I'm using 8mm galvanised rod because I haven't got out to get the um, stainless steel 10mm stuff. So I'm threading these in from the bottom, four of them. Halfway. Dink. 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 stood a brick wall perhaps six feet high. Grunting extravagantly, I hauled myself onto its flat summit and dropped down on the other side. And a Macquarie town. You think? I love Sydney. I love the city, like a spat, just sometimes called the movie along the way. But within moments, the whole filled with a vast and imposing silence. The sky was a rich and all but cloudless blue. Now I just need to let it sit for 24 hours and then there'll be a lot of sanding. So the glue's had time to dry, it's now time to remove all my clamps. And now the tricky bit, getting the top smooth. This is going to be time consuming and involve a lot of elbow grease. Man, this top is damn heavy. So I just had a quick look over it. Uh, There's a lot more glue sticking out than I hoped. I did scrape a lot of it off while I was, while I was drying, but nowhere near enough. Um, it's going to be a lot of sanding. I might have to go buy a new sander. Um, it's got this one problem here where this bit I hadn't clamped properly, it hasn't come together. So I might try and run a blade down there and just cut out what tiny little bits of glue have stuck there and try and get some glue in there and re-clamp that. And as for the rest of it, well... So that's the bottom side done enough for my purposes, smoothed off enough. Now I'll do the top. Yeah. 
So after about half a dozen passes with the planer, she's at the point where she's ready to sand. Managed to get pretty smooth with the planer, which I'm happy about. It means I didn't have to go out and buy a belt sander, I can hopefully just do it with the orbital sander. Give that a go now. That's all nicely sanded now, but unfortunately, before I can go any further, I need to cut this bit that didn't quite pull together right and re glue it and clamp it. So while I'm waiting for this to dry, I will start on the supports, the legs, and the sub table. So I'm going to make a frame, a rectangular frame, underneath the top, 50 in from the edge, all the way around. So I have to know my finished length. My finished length is going to be 1800. Um, once I've cut these off and added a piece of ceiling mill like this. So these timbers here are 40 by 65 Vitex, um, they're all seconds, but I should be able to get enough to run around underneath this table, it should look alright. And then the legs will be this selling of this colour here. But first I will make up this subframe at the top of the legs. I've cut my two long edge boards. And the other board will come in here. I think I'm going to check it out so it'll go in halfway in like that. And then the legs will be like so. So this will be checked in there halfway. And I'll just glue these two pieces, epoxy them. The same stuff I used for the top. Because um, I want to do it, see how much I can do without putting fasteners in it. And then when I put the leg in like so, the leg will be glued and screwed into the timber, so both of them will end up being screwed via the leg. So I will cut this out on the radial arm saw. Now the piece of wood to go here needs to be 550 long. So I'll just cut those and put them in. Like that. Now that this glue is dried, I need to cut my table to length and then glue an edge strip along. Wouldn't have had to glue an edge strip along if I hadn't used this rosewood, but the rosewood the seconds and they've all got cuts on the back of them so it won't look too good on the end otherwise they would have left the exposed end green which would have been quite nice but as it is I'm going to put the lignol on the edge and to cut the edges you could use a track saw or I don't have a track saw so I'm going to do it old school and a circular saw and a clamped on straight edge so when you do this you just need to make sure you know distance of your blade to this edge here so you can run it along your straight edge in the case of this saw it's 40 mil so you need to find your line I want to cut out this slightly shitty little bit here so I'm going to go just to the side of that and then I need to add 40 mil onto that and put my straight edge here
so time to attach the end pieces. So I've cut them roughly the length there, fractionally longer just so I can sand them down. I'm going to attach them using edge clamps. So these clamp onto the table, and then the edge will go here, and now will wind it on so I can come loose. Like that. I will of course put some packers up against the tabletop and the edge board, just so that nothing gets damaged. So I will now leave that to dry and go and have a beer. So after 24 hours the clamps coming off. So now I will flip it over. I won't sand this down yet. I'll wait until I I'll put the legs on and then I'll give this all a final sand. Um, so I'll flip it over now and put my boards on the bottom, which I'm going to attach my legs to. Before I attach these boards, I'll just give them a quick sand. Now I'm going to glue and screw these pieces in place. Um, I'm going to glue them with the same glue I used for the laminating the top. So CRC Builders glue, it's two pot epoxy. Um, and I'm going to screw them with these 85mm long galvanized. Unfortunately I don't have any stainless ones this size, so they'll never be seen anyway, so galvy ones it is. Um, 100mm ones are just a bit too long. Yeah, 100mm is gonna be right the tip. Is it a bit dark enough? The tip will be pretty close to the surface, I don't want that, so I'll use these 85s. Um, but before I do that, I'm gonna shift this and prop it over here somewhere between these two um, because I want to use a table saw for some other things while I'm waiting for this to dry Now, seeing as this drill bit came away from its base here, I think that might be a good chance to test just how good the epoxy is. So, now seeing as I've got a little bit left over here, I'll just smear a tiny bit on the end of this drill bit. might work but it probably won't work for long but who cares and then try and shove this back on right Let's see if that works in 24 hours I'll use it again Four legs cut out of 40 by 35 cylinder, 960 long for the legs. With that, <clears throat> with that dry and sanded, 
it's time for the legs. Now the legs are 960 long, or tall, depending on how you want to look at it. And I'm going to put a brace between on each end. And that needs to be 430 long. So I'll cut two of those now. So with those cut, I now need to start attaching everything. Now I'm going to attach my legs with these 65mm long batten screws, they're 14 gauge screws. So they will go through like that, and like that, one, two, on each leg. And then the crossbar, I am denied, I was going to do it without any screws visible, and put dowels through, clamp glue and clamp them. But I decided instead to use stainless screws. They won't look too bad. So I'm gonna use, these are 316 stainless, 100 mil long, 14 gauge batten screws. Um, and on the bottom of the legs, before I start, I'm going to put some of these rubbery type feet on. So they will go on out, so that it doesn't scratch my deck. And I'll just screw them on with some stainless, these are 30mm long, 10 gauge screws. So yeah, and if I, I'll probably end up gluing these, but I'll screw them first just to make sure I can get everything square and straight and everything. Once I've got the, the four of them screwed on, I'll put my boards through here, my two supports that are going to run through the middle here. So first I will drill all the holes for these on the drill press. So on the bottom of my legs I have drawn a cross to find the centre. I am going to drill a 5mm hole in the centre. to attach my foot. Done. Just repeat that four times and that's my feet ready to go. So I've drilled some holes in this off cut here and I've got a 7mm hole countersunk and a 6mm hole. And the 6mm is just a bit small, the countersink's not big enough. So I'm going to go with the 7mm with the countersink. And that way the screws will slide straight through, the heads will sit nice, it'll pull in quite nicely. And they'll go through those, that side easy, and there'll be a smaller hole in the other side, of course, for it to attach to. I have marked, I've come up from the bottom, different lengths of course, I've come up like about 30mm on this side and about 50 on this side to drill my holes, set my, my back guard here so that the holes will be in the centre each time. So let's get to work. four of them drilled I can now start attaching things. Before I attach the legs I'm going to attach the crossbar here. Um, so I've drilled two holes 150 mil from the bottom and countersunk seven mil holes just like I did on the other ends of the legs and so now I will put the legs in position, clamp the brace in place and drill and screw that way when I come to attach them at this point it will be a lot easier and I can get them nice and square 5mm drill bit I'm going to go in 
the depth of my screw. Now that's much easier to get everything in line and know exactly basically just needs to be screwed in that position. Can give it a quick check. Clean square. Clamp it and screw it up. I almost forgot to drill the holes for my braces running through the whole length of the table. So I've come in 190 from each side and that's where my braces will be. So it's a lot easier to drill this first on the drill press than try and do it once I've got everything in position. Right, so everything's clamped in place. Got a 5mm drill bit here. Got my 65mm long screws. Square for checking things. Let's go. So now I need to cut my braces. I uh, need two pieces, 15.45 long. So to facilitate the easiness of attaching this board, I have clamped a piece of board on the bottom here and then measured in 170 from the end to the edge of this and clamped that brace to the board. And I will now screw them on. And the last thing I'm going to add to the table is a piece of this Vitex, which I will glue into here. That helps keep these rigid and also gives me a place so I can drill a hole that will line up with the top so that if I ever want to put a umbrella in. So now with the last piece glued in place, I need to work out how to... <coughs> sorry get this table down because it now weighs a lot and once it's down give it a good sand get rid of any imperfections and then once it's sanded I can oil her up and put her on the deck ready for summer and then it was just a heap of sanding to do started off with 60 grit on some of the the rougher patches on the ends of the table where I'd glued them on the last thing I'd done and then I finished it off with some 120 took quite some time just to get it looking shit hot and then I just did some final finishing by hand with some 400 grit so now it's ready for the oil it looks pretty good pretty snazzy So I've just wiped it down with a damp cloth and she's looking good. Now to keep my table looking good outside, I am oiling it with this decking oil from Italy. I'll probably put on about four coats.
So, first coat on, looking pretty mean. I'm loving it. So, I've got another two or three coats put on over the next day or so. And then she's done. She can go out onto the deck. And the wife will be happy. Some strange reflection lines on there. It's not on the table. It's reflecting off the garage door. So she is complete. I'm very happy with it. Now I just need to get around to making some chairs. I'm going to make four stools for it at some point. But until then, thanks for watching. And I'll see you on the next one. Got a few videos coming up of builds using hardwood. So stay tuned.